Hello, my name is Florian and I'm a developer advocate at JetBrains. Let's have a look at the changes in Golan 2019.1. We will cover the new built-in profiler, debugger changes, a new extract interface refactoring, support for updating implementation of interfaces when using rename and change signature refactorings, the new nilness analyzer inspection, the ability to download the Go SDK straight from the IDE, vendoring support for Go modules, and more IDE general changes coming from the IntelliJ platform, such as a new theme engine, more databases supported, updated JavaScript, HTML, and CSS support, and even new key bindings. Let's start with the new profiler support. It integrates with the built-in profiling tools from Go, and it allows us to observe performance of our code in different points of view. The profiler supports all four profiling modes, CPU, memory, mutex, and blocking profiles. To see the profiler in action, go to any test file and select to profile either a test, a benchmark, or the whole package. After the execution finishes, we will see the profiler window show up and present us the information. By default, we have access to the flame graph view, but we can also view the information in a tree view or a list of functions and methods ordered by their cost. When you spot something that you would like to further investigate, you can navigate to the source code straight from the profiler window. You can change the configuration of these profiling methods to fit your needs, or you can load previous runs and have them displayed. If you do your profiling outside of the ID, you can also load these results and select the file that contains them to show up in the ID. Moving to the debugger, there are plenty of changes here as well. We start with the addition of the smart step into feature. This allows us to select in which function or method from a certain call chain we want to step into, avoiding all others and thus making all the debugging of a specific call easier. If you like controlling the ID with your mouse, you can now execute code until a certain line by clicking the line numbers on the editor gutter. Go routines are shown by default, but you can go back to viewing threads using a dedicated toggle. If you want to view data displayed in a certain format, the new View As feature allows you to toggle between binary, hex, and decimal representation for integers. Interface type variables now also show underlying type implementing the interface, which makes it easier to understand the code as it executes. Finally, addresses for pointers are also shown, which help us figure out what happens with the pointers and their values as our code relies on them while executing. Speaking of running applications, you can now configure all your round configurations to execute the programs or tests with elevated privileges. This means that if your application or test requires any special admin or root privileges, then you can still run it from the comfort of your ID. In the refactoring area, Coland received a few improvements as well. There is a new extract interface refactoring which allows us to select a type and choose from the list of methods it has in order to create a new interface. This will be useful when going from a single implementation to multiple implementations which need to expose the same functionality. The rename and change signature refactorings now support changing the methods of types, which implement an interface when changing the method of an interface. This allows us to quickly update large code bases in which an interface is implemented by multiple types without having to navigate to each individual type or having to wait for the IDE or compiler to find a mismatch. Code assistance via inspections has also been improved. A new inspection named Nilness Analyzer allows us to detect redundant comparisons in code, cases when accessing a variable will need to a runtime nil pointer the reference panic, runtime panics created by accessing a nil slice, and more such cases. You can also notice that the tooltips have been updated to show the topmost quick fix when quick fixes are available, which means it's easier to discover how to fix code highlighted by inspections. Editing code is also easier thanks to a couple of new intentions. Now you can merge or split multiple declarations for variables, types, or constants into a single or multiple blocks. A new export intention will let you export private function types or fields without having to switch between packages as it can run from different packages than the one where those types are defined. Getting started with a certain version of Go, upgrading it or downgrading it is also easier than before thanks to the new built-in facility to download the SDK. And since the built-in terminal is configured to use the Go version that your project uses, it means that you can now also skip external configuration for the IDE and never have to leave it while developing Go applications. 
If you use Go modules, then another useful change is that you can now use the vendoring mode for these projects and have everything self-contained in the project. You can toggle this for both existing and new projects. Code completion for Go modules has also been improved, with support for non-imported packages showing up from the Go modules cache. Moving to the general IDE changes, there are plenty of improvements there as well. Key bindings are important, and if you are used to work with Sublime Text, you'll be happy to hear that the IDE also features built-in key maps to replicate it. A Visual Studio Code key map is also available via plugin that you can install from the plugin section of the IDE. Speaking of editing projects, a new recent location pop-up is available and lets you navigate between places that were recently viewed. When enabled, this pop-up can allow you to navigate between recently edited places only, making it easier to go to the last edit locations. A new theme engine now allows us to fully customize the IDE look and feel. You can install the new themes from the plugin section of the IDE by searching for the word theme. The new projects dialog now contains additional project types such as HTML5, React, Bootstrap, AngularJS and more depending on the plugins that you have installed in your IDE. VCS support has also been updated. Using the context menu on commits from the log tab now shows up the new fix up and squash into actions and you can even cherry pick files from a commit into another. The database support has been improved as well with databases such as Apache Hive, Vertica or Greenplum being supported. JavaScript, HTML and CSS support has also been improved and you can learn more about all of this in our What's New page. That's it for today, thank you for watching.